Good morning, good morning, good morning. What another blessed day we have to be able to share in the word of God. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We are thankful, God. We are so thankful, God, to know that you are bigger than any of our problems. And because you are bigger than the problems that we may have, God, we thank you. Let us know that all our problems are small. Bless now every listener this morning, God, as they continue to seek you early and as they continue to believe and trust your holy word. We thank you now, God, for peace, and we thank you now, God, for our joy. We thank you now, God, for knowing that all is well. Thank you for, God, healing those who are going through whatever their situations may be, because, God, I know you know. And, God, we say that you're a very present help in time of need and time of trouble. And, God, I thank you right now for being here this morning, for opening the eyes of your people to see clearly now, God, that you are doing a miraculous thing and you are doing a marvelous thing for them. Even while they are yet in the midst, God, I thank you now that you're showing us your marvelous life. So bless now, protect now, guard now, and deliver. I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who did it all for us to give us this opportunity to share this morning. In his name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. Today we want to look at strength for today to encourage us to hang on in there and to encourage us to know that God has a, a perfect will for us and how he wants us to live and what he wants us to do. The Bible reminds us in the book of Romans, 12th chapter, 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2. And the Bible says, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Just want to share with you that God's will is for us to be holy. And not only does God wants us to be holy, but he wants us to live in a way so that our holiness expresses our love for him and it is acceptable unto him. The Bible reminds us, and Paul is reminding us as he reminds those believers who are in Rome, that God expects us, and he's making a plea, that God expects us through the fact of the matter that because he is mercy that he has given to us each and every day, and because his mercy sustains us and his mercy doesn't allow us to get what we deserve, it is saying to us, you need to recognize, you need to realize that God is so good to us. And because he is so good to us, and he said, and the scripture reminds us about being a living sacrifice. The Bible teaches us that long ago the priests would have sacrifices, but they would be dead animals. They would be brought up, and after the end of their sacrificial coming to uh, be represented, that was the end. But his, this scripture lets us know we are living, and God wants us to rejoice and to be happy, and he wants us to live in a way that represents who we are. And as we live as a way that represents who we are in Christ Jesus, it represents holiness. And our representation of holiness should represent the fact that we, we, we show the world that we are children of the Most High God. Well, what is Paul trying to get them to see? This morning he's letting them know that you are in this world, but you're not of this world. See, you don't have to act like everybody else. You are peculiar people. Remember that we, we are different from the rest. And as we're progressing through life and through life situations, he's saying, God, I want your whole body, your, your whole self, I, nothing missing. The enemy is trying to attack him. The enemy is trying to disrupt. And the enemy is trying to get us away from God's plan for us. But, but God has a plan that's pleasing and it's perfect. God has a plan for us that allows for us to to rejoice in the, in the midst of, and, and as we sacrifice, it is saying, since Jesus died for us, we can live for him. We can live for Jesus today knowing that all of our worries and all of our cares and all of our situations are, are caught up in the, in the price and the, in the sin that has been paid in full. That's why we can come boldly now, and that's why we should represent kingdom building. And that's why he's saying be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. What, what is it saying? What we do 
and how we represent, it should be pleasing unto God, which is our reasonable, which is the least that we can do since God has done so much for us. You guys, you know that God has been so good and is being so good. We can, and we can change the way we think. We can change the way we present ourselves. We can change because our change represents the newness of life in us. Because, look, it tells us even in that second verse that we are to not to be conformed to the way the world's way. We're not to be copycats of the world. We're to be different from the world around us. Now, I said earlier, they can see us as different, but I want to encourage you now, the way that you can change and not be conformed to the world, and it says about changing your mind, you can change the way you pray. You can change how you communicate and speak with God, which will change how you think. You can change in your reading. You can read God's word that allows it to, to go through the innermost parts of your body. And as you read that word and as you reflect even on that word, it allows for us to grow. And I had one pastor friend of mine, my pastor, to grow and to glow. And that's what God wants for us to do. He wants us to glow and grow. But he doesn't want us to be a part of this world, he, this, this present age and present day way of thinking. He's saying to us this morning that we can change and we should change it and we should be about transformation and we should about, be about renewal and we should be about meditation, which reveals God's will in our lives. When we spend time with God and when we meditate on his word and we find the joys of God and the blessings of God as we meditate. I want to encourage somebody this morning that the Holy Spirit in us, because we are changed, it will redirect us. Not only will it will redirect us, but it will re-educate us. And not only will it re-educate us, but it will renew us so that we will be able to, to do the will of God and we will know that his power and his presence is all about us. See, we got to, it's said to prove that. See, proving is, is showing that there's something about you now that's different than it was before. And see, I want to encourage you now, as changed believers, as changed believers with a changed way of thinking, you and all of us, we're grateful. And we should be grateful for the victories that have been won. We should be grateful that God has given us this morning to be able to shout even hallelujah right now in the midst of everything that may be happening. I want to encourage you now as you progress through life and as you are renewing your mind and as you are changing the way you think and as you are approaching your situations differently because God allowed Jesus to die for us, he wants us to represent as kingdom builders right now. He wants us to know that no matter how it looks, things are always going to change. And I want to encourage somebody, even in the scripture it tells us, it says, and this is Second Peter 3 and 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with us, not wanting any to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I say to us this morning, because God wants us to come to repentance and because he wants all of us to be saved, we can live and we can do the will of God by studying his word, by reading his word, by reflecting on his word, by even the ways we say meditating on his word and watch God do what he does. He will change. He will turn around. He will make things to work out for our good. So I just pray this morning that as you recognize and as you understand that we are different, we are peculiar, we are not like the rest of the world, we are a living sacrifice. Live out God's purpose in your life is that we live holy and that it's acceptable unto him. Heavenly Father, I thank you now for your word. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this day. I thank you now, God, that we are living sacrifices. People can see who we are because we represent kingdom building. For it is in the powerful and the penetrating name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, we believe, we declare, and we decree. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.